gentlemen welcome to the post lunch session the master class on design thinking by kpmg india uh, it's my pleasure to invite ajay agarwal design thinking practice lead kpmg india and rohit kaul product designer kpmg india to start the session i can't see the people at the back last row the guy on the cell phone yeah great oh great Good. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I am Ajay Agarwal. He introduced me as the design thinking practice leader at KPMG. Let me introduce myself. I am Ajay Agarwal once again. A Haryanvi by origin, an entrepreneur by heart, and a consultant by choice. Three qualities. Hain. Got three qualities. Okay, done. So, I know it's a post lunch session, and all of you are some of you are here to avoid the outside heat. So, I will create some heat for you inside also. Right. So, all of you stand up, please, before we start our session. All of you stand up. Oh, great. Um, choose a partner for yourself. Quickly, choose a partner for yourself. So, people are now searching. Gone, 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 gone. Who, 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 who? Oh, one guy is exit. One of our customers is gone. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> so, choose a partner, guys. Why are you still standing so far? Please come, come along. Okay. Cool. So, decide who's person A and person B. Fast. Between the partners, decide person A and person B. I think you are still you are still waiting for a partner, sir. Or you not got? Rohit is your partner. Rohit is your partner. Go ahead. See, that's why I bring a person along with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here is what it is. What is I? What do you think that you have to do? So person A and B, I'm going to give you the dream career that you always wanted. Okay. Person A, you are a journalist. Okay. Person B, you are an inventor. You are the inventor. No one can question you on your invention. No one can ask you why, what, and stuff. Okay? So, person B, you have invented goggles for honeybees. Goggles for honeybees. And person A, you are a journalist, not Arnab Goswami, but anyone else. You are just interviewing person A to a person B to understand more about the invention that he has made. Go ahead, you have 30 seconds, quickly start. People sitting, why can I request you to stand? Six, five, four, three, two, one. Come back, 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 come back. Stand. Stand. We are not going to spare person A also. So person B, so it's a role reversal now. Person B, you are the journalist. And person A, you are the inventor. The rules remain the same. Right? Person A, you have invented parachute for elephants. And person B, you are interviewing person A. Come on, go ahead, guys. So we see some quotes coming out right now. <clears throat> Four, three, two, one. Come back, 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 come back. Settle down. Settle down, everyone. Great. The topic that you've selected for today is designing human-centered unicorns. Right? So before we start, just a question. All of you know these organizations? Yes? You've used some of their services, if not all? Yes? What is one thing that is common between all of them? Tech firms. They are against the consumer data. Okay, you say consumer need. Someone said data, someone said tech. Anyone else? Aggregators. Good design. Oh, great. Design thinking session, good design. Good. <laughs> great. So I heard some people saying tech, some people saying, yeah? Interactive. Okay, great. Simplifying our lives. Oh, great. So, mythology and philosophy coming together. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Sense market. Sense market. Market sense. Okay, great. Yeah. Everyone is earning good. Great. <laughs> Unicorns? Okay, great. Yeah. They already had a customer base. They already had a customer base. So, what did they do different? So, what did they do different? The user 
product is being sold. In fact, they identified a user behavior and they used technology to fulfill that. Great. So what is one thing common? People said technology, but technology in itself is not the real disruptor. The real disruptor is the person who's sitting at the center. Who is the user? People like all of us. Right? We have been using, we had challenges. We had taxis coming in Mumbai, black and yellow. Conditions not good. We never used to feel safe. They used to not talk to us properly. All of that. And Uber figured it out or Ola figured it out, one of the two. And they said, I can give you a better service. And we said, let's go to those. Similarly, we have others like this. So guys, what is the key message here? It's not about tech. It's about human-centered. It's about being customer-centered, understanding the pulse of the customer and designing for it. You can use any technology for it to, to, to help the customers satisfy the need that they are looking at. But it's about human-centered. So before I move forward and we do some good activities here, I'd just like to call someone here. The lady here, can you please come? Yeah. Please. What's your name, ma'am? Ruchika. Ruchika. Hey, Ruchika. So, uh, Ruchika, can you just hold your hand like this? Yeah. And along with Ruchika, all of us will hold our hands like this. Come on. All of us hold our hands like this. All of you. OK? Close your eyes. Ruchika, you also close your eyes. Close your eyes. Aakhe band kijiye. Great. Think of something between your hands. Imagine something between your hands. OK, open your eyes and relax. So Ruchika, what did you imagine? I imagined a frame. She imagined a frame. Yeah. Let's take some others. What did you imagine, ma'am? A mobile phone. A mobile, such a big mobile phone? <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Oh. The gentleman there, Ashish, what did you imagine? Yeah. Box. Full bin money? Oh? Yeah, yeah. Dollars. 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 See, Ashish, your box and his dollars combined together. <laughs> you can take it along. Okay, anyone else who wants? Yeah, please. The earth, uh, he wants to own everything. He says, nothing, I want to leave. Crystal ball, telling the future of my company. Crystal ball, you create futures, ma'am? Okay, done. Good. What if I tell you that you have this baby between your hands? Ruchika, you can take your seat if you want. Yeah. Thank you, Ruchika. First of all, let's give an applause for Ruchika, ma'am. Yes, what if I tell you that you have this baby between your hands? And what if I tell you that this baby is going to die soon? Yes, precisely. There are over 4 million babies that die in India every year because they are premature babies and they cannot sustain the minimum temperature required for a body to live and they die. So this was the challenge that was given to seven Sanford graduates to solve, to design an incubator which is $200 and less. Cool. So how would we go about doing it? Let's see, we're all startup guys, right? Some of us are, and some of our, us are aspiring startup guys. How would we go about doing it? The thing that we're trying to address is designing, a star, designing an incubator, which is $200 or less. Sorry? Styrofoam box. Styrofoam box. Great, good. Start what is required in an incubator, and then what do you do? Then you look at assembling, then you look at how do you make it cheaper, 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 cheaper. Today, just to tell you, today an incubator costs approximately $20,000. One incubator. So we're talking about 200. Yes. Someone else also wanted to take an attempt. Short at it, yeah? Something portable. Why? You move it around multiple uses. Okay, great. No use of electricity. Why? Okay, great. Good. Great. Hmm? What are the biggest uh, cost contributors of current incubators and find out how to reduce this cost? To uh, first of all, we should uh, understand the basic requirement, why we need it uh, at a lower cost, then we approach that market and understand how we can put this at Great. So I think gentleman here, one gentleman there, and the lady there. You touched it. Before moving into technology, before moving into dismantling and seeing how can we make it, how can we optimize it, we said, let's take a step back. Let's go and understand where the challenge is. 
Let's go and understand what the problem, who are facing this problem. Let's go and understand what their life is. Yes? So these guys, they, they chose this route. They said, we would want to go to the, so this, 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 this problem pertains in the villages of India, tier two towns, that, those kind of places. They went to those places and they said, let's go and figure out what the challenge is. Let's go and live their life. Let's understand before we create something. What they figured out was that even if people who can afford it, if they have a premature baby, when these babies are being transported to the towns where these incubators are, they die in transit. So the problem is no more $200. Because if you design something for $200 and you're still installing in the cities and the hospitals, what will happen? The problem is still there. Because transit will still happen. Children will still die. So what do they do? They said we need to rethink it. So the problem statement no more was that we are designing an incubator which is $200 or less. The problem statement was what? That is the first thing. So they attempted that. Then what was the problem statement? The first problem is of reach, is of access. Accessibility is the first problem. So we need to design something that can reach here because we can't change the infrastructure of the whole country at one go. We need to design something that can reach to these places rather than designing something where they need to go in to these places. One. Then they said, like the gentleman said, that then they said that if this has to go to villages, electricity in the villages of India is still a challenge. We don't have 24 hour electricity there. So whatever we design has to run off electricity. Great. So this is how a traditional incubator looks like. This is what they designed. So this is the bag where you put the baby. There's a plate to support the bag and you see this material, this is a plastic kind of material here. There's a wax type material that they use, which you, when you, once you walk. Warm it, it keeps the baby warmer warm for three to four hours. This organization, out of the seven guys, there were five Indians. It's an Indian startup based out of Bangalore, known as Embrace. They've already sold over four million such warmers from the past four years. About human centered, defining the problem, exploring the problem, identifying who are the people whom is this problem is going to impact and then understanding what are they facing. A lot of times it changes the face or the frame that you look at it from completely. In this case, it went to reach rather than cost. What do you think this costs? We talked about $200, right? We still talk about money. We have to make it, make it affordable. So what did this cost? Less than 100, okay. So he's given a range. Kuch bhi uthalo usme se. Yeah, anyone else? Hundred dollars? Okay, he, at least he's been he's stuck to a number. Great, good one. Well, well tried. Yes, thousand rupees. So this twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. That's what the cost is. That's what they're selling it at. Think of it. Completely reframing and relooking at the problem, and that's the power of design thinking. It helps you reframe the challenge rather than being product centric, technology centric, or being. Uh, uh, Industry centric, you are being customer centric, you are being human centric. I will solve problems for my customers. Be those problems in any space that they are looking at. I will expand my horizons rather than making them expand their or contract their ways of dealing with my organization or my startup or my, uh, my work that I'm doing. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, there is. So uh, I can give you, I mean, there's data available in public domain itself. We can, I, we can, share, I can share that with you. OK, so <clears throat> the key message here, empathy brings in a shift in perspective from designing products, services, or processes to designing human experiences. And that's what we need to start working towards. Be it NGOs, like the lady talking about here, they are into designing human experiences. Be it startups, be it established companies like us, we have to start working towards this. Cool. So what are the secret ingredients of design thinking? Four key things that we need to remember. Empathy, ideation, prototyping, and storytelling. And we're going to learn all of these here right now. We're going to experience and experiment with them right now. So be prepared. You have got some papers and pens? Yes, no? Or if you don't, they're going to come to you. People, someone is distributing it. So great, we are going to experiment some bit of it here itself. So cool. 
let's get into action guys the challenge that we all are trying to solve is how might we redesign an eyewear for our peers you all understand eyewear yes this is a sad one you can have a more fancy one that you look at okay we are all going to redesign an eyewear for our peers yes all prepared cool so all of you have a paper and a pen we'll wait for 30 more seconds guys let everyone have it Ruth, you need to be more agile, man. You you have less weight, and then then also you're so slow. Everyone has it. The gentleman there is still waiting. Yeah. Okay. So the first activity that we all need to do is sketch your ideal eyewear. Go ahead. Sketch your ideal eyewear. Sketch your ideal eyewear. You have a paper, you have a canvas in front of you, you have some writing material. Please sketch an ideal eyewear. There are some people who are still searching for a paper. You need a paper? A pen? I have only one. I can lend you only one. Both? Expectations too high? <laughs> you can do it on this also. That's fine. Go back to the problem that we tried to look at. What was the problem? Just read it once again. And I read it to you thrice, huh? Who are you designing it for? Peers. <coughs> Did we even try it? We just talked about it, na? Jinko problem hai, unse pooch to lo, ja ke ek baar kya problem hai? Did we even try? No? Straight away started sketching. Just because kisi ne bol diya to, banao. That's what we always do. That is what I want to. I want you to change, and that is the key message that you all need to take. One message that if you want to take, take this: that we need to focus on the human whom we are designing for. Human, human, human. That's it. Okay. Let's go back. So let's experience empathy first, and then we will look at redoing the same thing. And then let's see how do we change stuff here. Can we have the video, please?
question still remains. There were 18 odd people in this entire video, everyone having a different need. Will you give them the same solution or different solutions? A person who's going for the 25th wedding anniversary, a person who's going and visiting her dad for the last time, a person whose tumor is malignant. That's precisely what we're talking about. Feeling what the other person is feeling, feeling their life, trying and living their life to experience what they're going through. Even if we are startups, we don't have money, but you as co-founders can go and see what companies are going through, what, 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 your, what your customers are going through, what, your, what the humans are going through, and then try and design something. Like the way you feel for them, you start feeling for your customers. Great, so we'll continue with the activity that we talked about. So we had person A and person B. You all have your partners, person A or person B, please go ahead with them. Yes, and why are you so sitting like husband and wife just fought? <laughs> they come together, please just pick up the bag from here. It doesn't look like they just had a fight and they're separated like this right now, both looking in on opposite directions. Okay, great guys, so now we talked about the whole specs thing or the eyewear thing, let's continue that, okay? So we're going to design it for peers. Your peer is the person who's your partner. Cool? So spend the next five minutes, person A, just understand the needs of person B with respect to an eyewear. What does person B go through? What is his life? What is the importance of the eyewear in his life? All of it, just go and understand that. And make notes. Just make notes of what the person is going through. What is the relevance of an eyewear in his life or her life? Please do that. Five minutes, go ahead. Five minutes, everyone does it. Anyone who does not will come and dance with me here. I'm a pretty bad dancer, so you have to just accompany me. Your customers also give you limited time. Ma'am, just please be seated only. Just please be seated. Because he's going, to be a, he's going to be a partner for the rest of the uh, session. Great. So uh, now, guys, uh, let's do a role reversal. Let's do another five minutes. You will interview him now. Or the person B is going to interview person A. Same, understanding the needs of person A on with respect to eyewear. Please go ahead. Five minutes. Continue your discussion. So here I see the gentleman, he's waiting to ask questions and the customer is on phone. <laughs> All the balcony guys, the premium guys, please continue with the activity. Great. Ah, okay, done. Good. They did it. Let's go to the next stage. What you now need to do, you have collected a lot of data. You've collected a lot of information, which was some structured, some unstructured. By the way, I found one need. Of, a, of an eyewear here, a unique one. I saw a gentleman sleeping here, and the reflection of the screen was on the specs, so some, no one could figure out that he's sleeping. So the person who was sitting next to him, I had to tell him thrice, he's sleeping. Then he figured out yeah, he was sleeping. So this, this in the design world is known as extreme use. An extreme use of a product that, that you make. Okay, or a unique use. Anyways, this also can be a thing. So now the thing that we need to do is, the interviews that you have done together or the understanding that you have gathered together, what you will now do is you will create a common understanding of needs that putting put, put together both of you, what are the needs that are coming out? Okay, what are the needs that are coming out? So before we go there, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. So you were raising your hand for the question? No? Oh, okay. oh, no. I was like, great man, before even I ask the question, he's raising his hand. During my MBA days, we used to call this DACP, Desperate Attempt to Class Participation, and we, we, we were like, okay, great. Okay, let's see. So, uh, what are the needs of this lady here? A trolley? Someone said a trolley? Oh, great, good. Oh, we'll just wait, huh, guys. We'll ask the premium guys who are sitting in the balcony. They're having all the luxury. Balcony guys, yeah, what are the needs of this lady? Trolley? Oh, okay, so trolley. copy paste, control A, control C, control B. <laughs> guys. Sorry? A, la uh? a, laptop. a laptop, okay, I sort of love something, <laughs> where did you go? <laughs> I, a laptop, a laptop is what she Kindle. Kindle. Kindle, okay. Assistant. Ask her what the problem An is. An assistant. I'll ask her and I'll tell you what her problem is, great, okay. <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, anyone else? Yeah, I want to take a shot. Yeah? Knowledge information. Okay? A helping hand. A helping hand. And the hand has been on What do you mean by it? <laughs> okay. Glasses. Need these glasses, the one that you're designing? Okay, done. Barring one person. Yeah, please. Gym equipment. Gym equipment. Gym equipment. <laughs> the uniquest answer that I've received till now. <laughs> Gym equipment. Okay, great. She's very eager to finish all the books in one day. All the books in one day. So? So she wants some eyeglass where she can read it fast. Okay, done. Again, going back. Yeah, please. What she is looking for? Basis, whatever is available, what do you think she is looking for? A helping hand is what he said. <laughs> okay. So, a lot of you mentioned not the needs, solutions to those needs. Someone said a helping hand. Someone said gym equipment, body banwa those ki. Right? Someone said trolley. All these are solutions to do needs. What are our needs? Let's go back. Someone said information. That's a need. Kindle is a solution to provide information. Laptop is a solution to provide information. Why am I saying this? If you go back and understand that at the core, why does she need a Kindle? If you say Kindle, or why does she need a laptop? You'll go to the core of it saying that, why, what is she looking for? And then you can have 100 different ways or you can have the gentleman going to her and just reciting everything. A helping hand. Oh, you're looking at this information? I will read and come to you. I will read and come to you. <laughs> okay. So, a Kindle and all whatever you mentioned are solutions to those needs. We need to go to the needs and that's what you need to look at. One, one identification thing that you can see is needs are verbs, not nouns. Nouns are solutions to those needs. So go to that level of whatever if someone has said something, are those solutions or are those wants or needs? Cool. Go ahead. Take five minutes. Make a list of needs. Put together a compiled list of needs. Go ahead. Five minutes. You can discuss together. That's fine. You can work together as a team. Yeah? Are we assuming that the ghost of personal consumption and that should actually There. Uh, Rohit? You just come. Gentlemen, there needs a paper. Everyone, stop, stop, stop. Now, the next step to this is something that we, we are best at, which is what? All of us, right? Without even bloody knowing the problems, we had solutions. So the next thing, I'm going to put you in your strong area, solutions, right? But now the purview of your solutions is different. What you're now looking at is for these needs, how do you need to give a solution together and not one you do at least think of five solutions five uni oh my god he said it's already afternoon second it's already we had a lot of rice and stuff uh, sorry yes that's why i said only five now that was episode 25 man okay done five five solutions is what you have to think together so brainstorm and think of five solutions to all these needs that we put together. If not all, at least the top five needs or top two, three needs that you have prioritized. Go ahead. Five solutions. Huh. Light. All these premium guys, we are looking up to you. We are looking genuinely looking up to you. So you have to be the next, sorry? Get funded. Yes, who's going to fund the, who's going to fund the gentleman? Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is you need to prototype it. Okay, here what we're going to do is we're going to do sketch prototyping. Okay, out of the five, 
you need to choose the top one or two that you have and you have to create a big idea sketch. You have a big paper, big idea sketch. Create a sketch. And you're gonna give someone a vision, please create a sketch for that. <laughs> Beat it now. <laughs> okay, so that's the next thing. You need to create a big idea sketch. And while creating a big idea sketch, you also need to also need to compile a compelling story. Story around your design. You need, to, you need to put up a story. So his customer is already gone. He said he's asking for funding, so I'm not here anymore. <laughs> okay. So uh, what you need to do? Two things. One, you need to design. You need to sketch it out. Second, you need to also design a story around your sketch, because when you need funding, you need a story as well. So two things put together. Total ten minutes. Go ahead. Big idea sketch. story you want to tell? Yeah. Done just sketching? No. I just came. Okay, join them. So you make him do the story now. Cheer, all of you. Yes. It's purely that. Okay, let's, let's again, if all of you are finished with your story, just give me a cheer. Yes. Okay, let's again, if all of you are finished with your story, just give me a cheer. The story is still not complete. There are some who are still doing it. So the gentlemen here are still doing it. Let them do it. And people here also are doing it. Look, when cheer is not in the chair, when it doesn't come from here, it's like that. And you, all the premium guys, they are just sitting in... Balcony. All the balcony premium guys, right? Premium guys, one of your stories is going to be heard for sure. How many of you would want to tell their stories? One. So there's one founder, co-founder Jodi here. No? Achha, alag alag ho. Achha, me, oh, toh, mera, meri to, mera to ye hai, sorry. <laughs> okay, done. So one, two. Achha, he is not saying me. Partner dono, but wo hi bolega. <laughs> Good. Three. Four. Here? Uh, all is good. Five. Okay, five. Okay, one by one, you want to come here. No, you did not ask, you did not empathize. <laughs> Should have asked. Come, 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 come. Fast, fast, fast. Or you want to tell it from there only, you can tell it from there. So what do you, what do you have? Guys, after every story, if we like this story, like investors, we give them a cheer. If we don't like this story, we still give them a cheer, but a silent one more. Okay? Done. Let's go ahead. Check the house. I will start. And I'm very bad at drawing. So no disclaimers, guys. Let's let's go ahead. There is ear. There is earphone. And just... Uh, a single frame over here, which is loaded with frame. The story goes like, how did I get my girlfriend back? Because I am an investment analyst and an avid reader. So every time I used to sit in front of computer, so my eyes was always like this. Whenever I used to meet my girlfriend, since we have to marry her, I often got rejected. So suddenly this idea came to me. Why don't I have a, just a frame which is loaded with uh, lens which reads for me and the uh, audio would convert it through my earphone. So that's my idea. Good. So this is for reading and this is for watching my screen. Guys, we do it the young way. We give it a... Okay. We give him a cheer. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> cheer. No, come, come, come. Will you go next? No. Gentlemen. Yes. Please. I want to share some real story. अभी मैं तो उनकी झूठी थी? आपने पहले ही बोल दिया? आपने visualize किया है और I can. I had married with that girl. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good one. This one, this one. That was a good one. अभी अगर हम सोचते हैं कि ये अगर हम ये चीज को हम एक्चुअल में सेल करना चाहते हैं या किसी का सॉल्यूशन लाना चाहते हैं तो I just visited Dubai and Atlantis. वहाँ पे वाटर पार्क है. वहाँ पे हम लोग जाते हैं तो मैक्सिमम लोग स्पैक्स पहनते हैं जो लोग को स्पैक्स निकालना पड़ता है फिर पढ़ नहीं पाते हैं लोकेशंस नहीं मिलता है तो उसके ऊपर से मैंने एक कुछ एक डिज़ाइन बनाई है एक ऐसे हम लोग ग्लास डिज़ाइन करें जिसके अंदर बीच में से छोटा सा एक थ्रेड हो और हम दो ग्लास को आप ऊपर नीचे से थोड़ा प्रेस कर सकते हैं जिसके वजह से आप उसके नंबर्स चेंज कर सकते हैं और ये वाटर फिल्म होगी उसके ऊपर बेसिक और एंटी स्टेटिक होगा कोई भी बंदा इसको पहन के आराम से वाटर पार्क में कोई भी एक राइड कर सकता है और थोड़ा सनग्लास इफेक्टिव है जिसके वजह से वो अच्छी तरह से देख सकता है माने एक तो इको फ्रेंडली नो टैक टैकी मैक्सिमम टैकी कुछ इसमें है नहीं लेकिन मैंने एड ऑन वर्जन टू भी बना सकता हूँ पर पहला वर्जन में ऐसा है <laughs> पहला वर्जन ऐसा है कि जो किसी को भी एफोर्डेबल हो सेकेंडली किसी के भी नंबर्स में चले यानी हम वॉल्यूम में प्रोडक्शन कर सके सो दैट इज़ द थिंग और सेकेंड ऑप्शन में मैं इसमें जस्ट छोटा सा एक सेंसर जैसा लगाना चाहता हूँ जिसके वजह से आप बीच में बीच पे बैठे हो और आपको लगे कि मैं कुछ बुक्स एन डी की बुक्स या कुछ भी पढ़ना चाहते हो जैसे किंडल है तो ऑटोमेटिकली आप उसको सेंस करके उसका कलर ब्राइटनेस चेंज हो जाए तो आप सनलाइट में भी पढ़ सके थैंक यू लाइज गिव मच यस Good, good, good. Let's go to the third one. Yes, this, this we'll we'll do this here, here. You have to come along, huh? Oh, Bichar, oh, Aram, sir, sit down. He's doing his work. He's an investor, na. So, hi guys. Uh, I am Simant, and this is Anas, my co-founder, and we represent Drustikon Solutions. That's our startup, and uh, we have come up with two solutions. Uh, first is an eyewear. Uh, so. Based on our uh, potential customer feedback, we had a uh, few set of problems, which were uh, a, uh, the lenses are prone to scratches. B, people lose their specs. Uh, C, they wanted multiple features on their uh, specs. So, the first specs is it, it is made up of light carbon material. It is scratch resistant. It has a Bluetooth enabled uh, headset, so you can kind of take calls on it. and uh, it has also a gps locator and it has got wireless charging so <laughs> so <laughs> that is solution 1 solution 2 is a gelatin based contact lens uh, which the user can wear and no need to take it off uh, when you are asleep it kind of dissolves in your eyes so all you have to do is wash your eyes and get a new set in the morning so these are our solutions great great good one good one guys give them give them a cheer come on Yes. Let's go to the next one. Okay, that guy has been raising his hands. We'll go to you next, and then the last one we'll go to the ladies here. Yes. Sure. Then I don't want to design any eyeglasses. I want to design a machine, vending machine, wherein you can uh, go there and uh, do your uh, operations, uh, laser operations, in just ten uh, minutes. And uh, with the cost vending of, machine. Yeah, Now I'm solid. <laughs> vending machine. Yeah, yeah, it would be a portable vending machine. Uh, the cost would be uh, not more than your eyeglasses. Sorry. 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 Will people trust the vending machine? Yeah, yeah. There are already there. There are solutions uh, uh, of uh, lasers uh, treatment uh, in the market. But I wanted to make it in the mass so that it would be cheap. So, आप वहाँ पे आँख ना लो अपनी. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's it sometimes vending machine eats my money so in this case the vending machine will eat the eyes <laughs> no this would be this would be a prototype okay great good one good one okay much you have one come on go on a different one yes let's go to this group first and then we'll come to you okay go ahead please come 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 so how many of you wear lenses here contact lenses how many times have you mostly i'll talk about the women here how many times have you got drunk and thinking that oh god i can't get sloshed and sleep off because i need to take off my lenses or stay over at somebody's place solution thank sold thank you solution sold problem define kar rahe hain thank you but that's the problem with people who wear lenses so we are trying to create a lenses which is called freedom 
freedom from carrying uh, storage like your uh, lens cover freedom from uh, carrying your glasses after wear after you take off your lenses freedom from actually using any kind of uh, solution so we're looking at making a contact lens which can be actually just wash your face uh, use water and you're not bothered ever to carry all these things with you when you have to go for a party or travel or anything else uh, also um, pollution resistant allergy resistant infection resistant i'll just blink that's <laughs> good <laughs> come on guys give them a cheer yes last group please acha ek ek point bolna bhul gaye ho nahi okay theek hai please go ahead okay hi i'm sonal and uh, we've dis i've designed glasses keeping in mind uh teenagers and young adults uh the reason being because at that age uh they can't be too bothered about taking care of of their glasses whether it's sunglasses or otherwise and hence we are creating glasses the frames of which are made of silicon and uh hence durable they also come with replaceable lenses of different shapes and sizes so the silicon frame can take in not only different colors but also different shapes and sizes and colors of of lenses yeah that's i think pretty much it thank you thank you one give them a cheer guys come on so if you look that let's go back to the question i told you to design something to start with you want to say something no okay now so i told you to design something to start with and you had put something on paper to what you have designed right now someone designed a story of a lady who's who is married to right okay so <laughs> so someone designed a vending machine backo man i mean <laughs> i can just imagine my eyes just going into the vending machine and never coming back on me <laughs> okay so uh, do you think that there's a difference between when you change the lens of looking at the problem when you when you looked at it from a human centered lens do you see there's a difference in how you look at it and the solution that you thought फिर से फिर से वैसा ही रिस्पॉन्स है यस डन सो दैट इज वॉट दैट इज वॉट द मैसेज दैट आई वॉन्ट टू लीव विच इज अबाउट इफ यू लुक एट योर सोल्यूशन इफ यू लुक एट योर बिजनेस फ्रॉम अूमन सेंटर्ड लेंस एंड यू कैन लुक एट योर बिजनेस प्रोडक्ट सर्विसेज फ्रॉम अूमन सेंटर्ड लेंस द वे यू रन योर बिजनेस इज द वे यू क्रिएट प्रोडक्ट दी वे यू डिजाइन प्रोसेस इज द वे यू डिजाइन सर्विस एंड डिलीवर सर्विसेज विल चेंज एंड वॉट स्टार्टअप बिकम यूनिकॉन्स apart from the valuation part but what startups become unicorn unicorns the company the startups or the product the companies whose products are loved by their customers the the companies whose products are loved by their customers ultimately they are going to become startup uh, they are going to become unicorns they want to make money obviously everyone wants to make money right so we just finish this and this was the message that i was talking about human remembers businesses that remembers humans remember this guys humans who are customers remember businesses that remember humans so remember the humans whom you are working for designing for and that's what i wanted to share we also have sahir with us who's designed something who's done some great work in the space of eyewear itself using design thinking how has he designed stuff there he's going to share that story with you sahir please if you can guys give give sahir a cheer come on guys Hi guys. The other one. Take this one. I'm Sahir Zaveri. I'm here to take you on a little journey and tell you about what I've built and it relates really well to the previous talk that Ajay gave because uh it connects on a few different levels in terms of what uh design thinking is really about right uh ajay talked a lot about putting yourself in the customer's shoes and thinking about your problem from the standpoint of the end customer right uh when you take design thinking to you know uh, a more macro level and take a step back like ajay was saying in the beginning you start thinking not only about the customer but you start also thinking about all the stakeholders because design thinking really touches on every single point of not only the end product but where does it come from 
who makes it, how is it made, uh, why is it made the way it's made. And uh, this was an important part of the uh, lens through which we started our journey. And thinking about the eyewear uh, experience for the customer, but also the eyewear industry. And what does the industry look like? How does it work? Why does it work the way it does? And uh, is it really working in the best way possible? Or are there some problems that actually, uh, you know, maybe people don't even know about them, but they're massive problems that are untold stories that need to be told. And once they come to the forefront, uh, you start thinking about the entire uh, space and experience of eyewear differently. And uh, that's where this journey kind of starts. And I think it also relates to this quote, right? Because when you remember humans as a business, it's not just about remembering the experience that they had, um, you know, in that interaction with your product. It's about the experience they had in the interaction with your brand and your company and what they learned from it and what they gained from it. And so uh, with that, I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny because this really started off as a story about manufacturing and thinking about the manufacturing industry and then diving deeper into the eyewear industry. So um, this is, in a sense, a story not only about the eyewear industry, but also about manufacturing in general. And then I'm going to dive deeper into the eyewear industry specifically. This is how eyewear is made today. Um, we all talk about uh, Italian acetate, you know, the luxury material that we all kind of want our eyewear to be made of. It's been talked up for uh, decades. It's a hundred year old material uh, acetate. Uh, you know, brands like Ray Ban and uh, Oliver Peoples, they use this material very frequently. Um, and this is how acetate eyewear is made. So when you look at this picture, what do you think? What's your first thought? What's your first thought? What, what is all of this stuff on the sides? Waste, right? You don't, you don't see a pair of Italian acetate eyewear and think of waste, but this is how it's made. This stuff on the left and right, it's called swarf. It's basically uh, the leftover material from when you mill a piece of acetate down. It's a leftover plastic. That plastic, those chips on the side, they amount to 85% of the block that started out. So you take a block and you mill off 85% of it to land up with that little delicate frame front or temple that you end up wearing. Where does that go? It goes in the ocean. It goes in a landfill. Why does it go to the ocean or a landfill? Because that's the cheapest thing to do with it. You can't recycle it because the molecular structure of acetate gets damaged once you mill it down. And what you land up with is something that's frankly cheaper to get rid of and throw in the ocean than to really do anything else with it. And where does it go in the ocean? In Asia. Why? Because most eyewear is made in Asia. Irrespective of where the product is ultimately sold, the fact is that most of it's made in Asia, right? And so that's where it's going into the ocean. And that's why if you look at the most polluted rivers in the world, eight out of 10 of them are in Asia. Even because this, this story is not only about eyewear, right? This is a story about how things, the products we use are made. And what I've told you right now is about four-fifths of the material that goes into you, creating a pair of eyewear is actually waste at the end of the day. What's the other problem? The problem is that once eyewear is made, it's made for a certain size for a certain person's face at a certain point in time when you have a certain trend, right? Now, when you're making eyewear today, you have to figure out between nine and 18 months in advance what the trend is going to be when you launch the product because that's how long it takes to get all the tooling ready and all of the other factors in the supply chain ready before you can actually launch the product. So what happens? What happens is that companies decide to just produce a lot of everything because their biggest risk is that they don't have something that's on trend or that's stylish to sell when it comes into fashion. And so the solution is just make a lot of things and hope that you have enough 
so that when your customer walks in your door or goes onto your website, you have something to offer them that they, that they can buy. And the end result is that two thirds of all eyewear made never get sold. Two thirds, more than half the eyewear made never get sold. And you guys must be thinking, how does this make sense? How do these companies make money? And that's the problem, right? When you look at eyewear companies today and you look at their biggest cost, it's not making the product they sell, it's marketing, right? And so the cost of a lost customer is greater than the cost of having produced an item that never got sold. And this is the way that most fashion and accessory related industries work today. There's a reason that you read about H&M's $4 billion inventory problem, right? It's exactly this. It's because they have all started to produce way too much product. And they have driven down the cost of making the product just so that they can ensure they have something in their store or online that they can sell because it takes so long for them to produce a new product. And the last part with eyewear, and I'm sure this came up a lot, is that they just don't fit a lot of the time, right? You go into the store, you have an experience where, you know, however it manifests itself, whether you don't think it looks nice because the frame is too big for you, whether you don't think it feels comfortable because it doesn't fit you around your ears or on your nose properly, the fact is that they just don't fit. And so with all of this in mind, we developed this, which is a zero waste platform for producing custom eyewear. How does it work? We have an app, you scan yourself, we use the 3D scan and the data we collect from it to create eyewear that's perfectly fit to you based on your face shape, face structure, sh features, and then we make every single pair to order using a patented technology platform we've developed that's based on 3D printing technology. The end product is that we only make items when they're needed, and every single item we make is made for you, it's made for the customer, right? And that's it, there's nothing more, nothing less. We don't have to manage a crazy supply chain. We don't have to predict trends months and months and sometimes over a year in advance. We can add new designs on the fly as new trends come to market. And every single pair that you experience as a customer just fits you because it's designed to fit you. It doesn't exist as a static product, it exists in the cloud and you bring it into reality for yourself. So just to take a step back and think about the scale of the problem we're talking about, right? And this is where, again, you can really start thinking about the entire supply chain and the stakeholders when you're thinking of a problem. So for every pair of eyewear that's sold, 14 pairs worth of material is thrown out today. Think about that, 14 pairs. You take the one-fifth statistic and the two-thirds statistic, and I've rounded numbers off, but it basically comes out to being 14 pairs worth that's sold for every pair that's sold which is pretty crazy, right? You think of you know, the plastic water bottle that you drink out of. When you throw it out, you're like, okay, that's waste that I'm creating. But what about the waste that's created for the products that you consume and buy that you may not have thrown out yourself? Whose responsibility is that waste, right? That's where the second point comes in. 97% of global waste is actually created in supply chains. And it's not created by us, the end users. So what companies have done is they've basically told us that we're responsible for the waste in the world, even though we don't even create most of it. And they are able to hide behind the fact that you can't see what's going on in their supply chains and you can't see what's actually happening. But this is a story that's coming out more and more. And when you think about designing solutions, you can't only think about the end product, like I said before, you have to think about all the stakeholders and all of the elements that go into creating that product. And this is the economic side of it, right? Which is that if you move over to a system where you start making products to order and you start making products for people, you actually can save money as well. Because you're currently blowing up, based on many estimates, about 10% of our global GDP on inefficient manufacturing every year. And when you look at just the manufacturing industry, which is about half of global GDP, that's 20%. So 20% of any company that makes anything is effectively being lost because of systems and practices like the one I described. So it not only makes sense for the world, not only makes sense for customers, but it also makes sense 
in terms of your bottom line. The last stat, you guys might have heard this, but ocean plastic will outweigh fish by 2050, which is crazy to think about. So this is a very real problem, right? Because this supply chain that we're talking about, it affects us in so many different ways. And if you think of the fact that most of that ocean plastic is actually not coming from the plastic water bottles and plastic straws that we're throwing out, but plastic that's coming from supply chains, there's only one way to really change things, which is to start changing the products that we buy and moving over to buying things that don't produce waste in their supply chain. So I've talked to you a little bit about the solution already, actually. Um, but it's very simple, right? It's literally that we measure your face and then we build without waste. And this can be applied to so many industries and so many products. There's one more part to this puzzle, which is when you move over to this kind of model, you can also start making things locally. You can start producing things closer to where they're consumed. And that has an impact at the climate level because you're cutting down carbon dioxide emissions of shipping, you know, think about it. You're also shipping that two thirds of eyewear from wherever it's being produced to a distribution center or a warehouse where it probably is not gonna end up being consumed just because you have to have it in stock or have it in inventory locally so that when somebody may or may not buy it, you have something to send them, right? In this model, you can actually start decentralizing production and start making products closer to where they're consumed. And so not only are you now making products for people that are made for them when they want them, but you're also making it close to them. And in that way, you create an entire ecosystem and model that is just better for everyone. It's better for the environment and it's better for the consumers as well. So we have a few di different distribution platforms just so you understand how this works. We have our own brand and then we also work with other brands and partner with them to bring new lines to market because ultimately this is about bringing change in an entire industry, right? Um, and the best way to do that is offering your own products so that you can showcase to people what you can do yourself and then try and work with the biggest players so that you can bring about the biggest change possible. Yeah, this is just a little bit of press that we've received and uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions people have. Thank you. Good. Okay, well, guys, uh, I think thanks, Ahir, uh, for this interesting story around how have you built a business on eyewear uh, by understanding not only user but stakeholder challenges as well. So, guys, uh, we talked about, we did, some, we did some stuff, we talked about some design thinking to be done, and this can be done in any space, anywhere. So, now, the last part, any questions that you have, we'll be open and happy to answer those, if not here outside as well, because I'm here till the evening. And, uh, yes. Anything else? No. Thank you, guys. It was a great, great afternoon session. We ended within time, did not extend it. So that's something that we earned over. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So we ended with a very, very sad clap. And we that's something that I'll remember of you guys. Yeah. I'll remember that of you guys. One thing that I'm taking back is a very sad clap. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Ajay. That yeah. was a fantastic session. Thanks so much. And on behalf of Ty,